I have no idea what I did here. <laughs> so in this beginning thing, it's gotta be something weird like it was paces. And then I had to have done some sort of weird math, like maybe I saw a video where someone said, paste this out, do this, do that, something. I don't know. This was pretty well off. All right, well, I'm hoping the wheel's more accurate than whatever happened in this situation. <laughs> so, but I have a good idea now with some of the stuff. And then I'll be overseeding with this. So it's the Scott Turf Builder Grass Seed, the Sun and Shade Mix. And then when you overseed, I think it's supposed to do, see right here, 8,000 square feet. So essentially it'd do the backyard if I overseed it the rate it wants to overseed at. And if you look, a lot of times on these labels, you'll be able to see what kind of grass it has in it and where it comes from. So a lot of this is from Oregon. So hopefully this works out pretty good. But we'll follow the steps we gotta do real quick. So I'm not gonna super mow the lawn down, but even though I really probably should. But because I'm kind of planning on just lightly overseeding over most of it with a heavy overseed during the in like the patchy areas. So I'll show you what I mean. Or I'll show you what I mean here in a moment. I don't remember. But this was out, as you guys could see, this rake in very many of the videos. This has been on the patio, or the porch, for quite a while. And it was because someone lost their keys during a snowstorm. And this works pretty good for trying to find them. It just helps if you have a general idea of where you did it. That way you're not raking the entire yard in a snowstorm. <laughs> so, but up here... This area gets hit pretty hard with like snow mold. And I already raked it a while ago to help just kind of get some air into it. But it still hasn't really recovered yet. And watch for dog landmines. <laughs> so, but I'll give this a little bit of a raking. This will get probably a good hit with the overseeding. So this I'll probably overseed at the proper overseeding rate. Maybe a little extra heavy. Don't know yet. And then... Well, it's almost like the grass is just laying down. Which is kind of the problem with the snow mold. Is that... Like the grass is not getting enough air. Once it... You know once the, the snow goes away so you get snow mold from like the the area being nice and warm when the snow first hits and then it's staying covered up so it almost like builds like a mini igloo that holds in moisture and heat and allows the mold to grow so pretty much just raking Trying to get as much of a straight shot as possible for the grass seed to get to the soil. So that side's pretty good. And then also we'll prep some of the other areas. Okay, this has got a little bit. And then, so like this area, this is like some of the Scott's turf builder stuff. And for some reason, this didn't grow last year. I seem to remember the dogs really like messing with it. So I'm just gonna kind of agitate it a bit, that way it's 
hope is good for taking on seed. And then I got a couple spots up here where there's a lot of like this clover. And I'm pretty sure I'm diagnosing it wrong because I, I thought I was reading something. I don't know if it's nutsedge or something, but someone had said that uh, the purple flowers are like a characteristic of it. So, but like in this spot here, you can see the soil pretty good. So I'm just gonna agitate it a little bit. And then hopefully whenever we put down the seed, it'll take and it'll be interesting to see what happens when I use that tenacity too just to see if it winds up impacting these and messing them up turn them white or if it'll leave them alone so but I got quite a few spots to do around the yard so I'll talk to you guys later Pretty much ready to get this stuff applied. Now, if you look, it's got, once you to mow the lawn at the lowest setting, bag the clippings, and then rake up the debris and stuff, that way it gets its best chance to go in, and then apply it, and then overseeding, and then it's got this setting for your spreader. So as long as you've got a spreader that they talk about, then you'll know right away what setting to run. So with mine being a rotary, It'll be on eight and a half. So, and then once you get it spread, then you just lightly rake to make sure it's got good contact with the soil. So hopefully the raking helps everything kind of like fall down and hit the ground. And then you want to water it pretty much every day until they get about two inches tall. So with that covering 8,000 square feet, I can either do my whole back lawn area and just a little bit of somewhere else or I can buzz root through hit the areas that really kind of need it and then kind of just do a light pass over the lawn everywhere to make sure that you know it's got a little bit everywhere so with the aeration that we did that'll help any new seeds too but it, it, the aeration will also help with um, like freeing up the already existing grasses so it'll be interesting to see and then when we come through with the tenacity that'll help stop weeds from growing in and germinating but it won't affect the grasses from germinating so the grass should be safe it's just some of the weeds that won't be <laughs> and then it's just about noon and the it was supposed to start raining at about three today but now they kind of moved it to about one with a 30% chance, like a 50% chance about two. So I gotta hurry up, go demine the yard. That way I can hurry up and get this stuff laid <laughs> or spread out. <laughs> and just a quick observation, the dog Pooper Scooper does a really good job of picking up all that dead grass that I scraped out. We got this set. To eight and a half and then eight and a half is a more open setting so the smaller the number the smaller the opening at the bottom and then as you can see it's blue <laughs> shaky 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 We're all done with the overseed. Let's do that real quick. Now we're back to our math. So for the tenacity, we're looking at four to eight fluid ounces per acre and 30 gallons of water. So I'm looking at five ounce rate, so kind of staying on the lower side. So there'd be five ounces to 30 gallons would be to an acre of like, that's 43 and a half thousand feet. So 
one ounce, so five divided by five, to six gallons, so 30 divided by five, to 8.7, so 8,700 feet, square feet, so 43.5 divided by five. Then we've got 13,000 square feet, which is roughly one and a half, 8,700. So we need 1.5 ounces and nine gallons of water, which would be nine teaspoons, because there's six teaspoons in an ounce. So nine teaspoons to nine gallons of water. But their droppers kind of kicking my ass. <laughs> Just because they've got teaspoons of tenacity to gallons of water. And its rate is much different. So instead of being, you know, roughly one teaspoon, so one ounce, six teaspoons. So one ounce would be six teaspoons, be one ounce per gallon. This has got, if I'm reading this right, one gallon to half a teaspoon, two gallons, one teaspoon, three gallons, one and a half teaspoons. So I think the rate of this is different than the rate that it calls for. This is a little like a really super light rate, I think. I know how to check this. <laughs> Alright, so I sucked up exactly one teaspoon of water. And as you can see, it's pretty close to the one teaspoon mark. pretty close so I'm assuming you go by the teaspoons maybe you ignore gallons of water so and then just believe in your math I wonder if this is set up that way in case somebody's coming in and they're not reading any directions and they're just jumping right into it then essentially they're not gonna do any real harm and just obliterate their grass but it may not just not be as effective as it could have been or I'm about to kill the crap out of my grass <laughs> Boy. and then so there's the tenacity there's the tenacity syringe you can use a surfactant if you're using it for a post emergent I may just use a little bit of it, I don't know, because um, I'm curious, if you don't use the surfactant, it's meant to soak into the soil. If you do use the surfactant, it'll help cling to plants better, and less of it will get to the soil. So I'll probably, n I'll figure something out. <laughs> like a little bit of dye here, and then this will just help me see where I've already sprayed. And then I bought this Greenwood four gallon backpack sprayer from Harbor Freight. And like most things that you buy from Harbor Freight, the box has seen better days. <laughs> but I'm really eager to see how this goes. Now the big thing that I would probably say is just like the man in the box, be sure that you wear, you know, long sleeves and pants so the proper PPE and stuff like that whenever you do this and the other thing is I'm using blue dye so it's gonna be blue hoodie blue pants then let's get this thing assembled we'll get the tenacity measured out to what I think it should be. <laughs> Ooh, she's starting to get light out here. Okay, so three teaspoon runs should be about 43.50. So the first run will be 60. 
called 590 4280 so about 4280 on the first one which will be close enough I think to this 4350 that hopefully we don't cause any issues so because we'll be going a little bit heavier in the water so it'll be a little bit, a little bit diluted down anyways and we're only doing the basically like a five ounce breakdown as opposed to we've got room in there so it could be four to eight so hopefully we're still staying on the light side we'll see how this goes all right so very tan And if the dye gets on your thumb, it looks very shiny, but it can also transfer. It's actually not transferring. Way to make me a liar. <laughs> but you're better off just swapping your gloves off every time you mess with the dye. That way you don't wind up with something blue that's not supposed to be blue. Sprayed about a gallon so far. You can see the dye on the outside, so that's why you want to wear something blue <laughs> when you're using blue dye. And then you can see in the lawn the slight bluish color. So, from about here that way has been treated, from here that way has not. Backpack sprayer is doing pretty good. Never used one before, it's pretty cool. I do wonder if like it leaks a little bit around this seal or something. So I wonder if there's like a little bit of stuff that might be hitting me a little bit, but I don't know. But otherwise then it's doing nice. And then if you're scared of the dye at all, that dye goes away. So it's not something that where it's going to be permanent.
didn't quite make it all the way done before the rain but now that it's raining we finished it up so then I took it rinsed it out with water a couple times and then ran the um, the sprayer until it ran clear the big thing with tenacity is it's not like other poisons where you can kind of have it mixed up and it's got like shelf life it's pretty much you mix it up and you use it otherwise you throw it out while I was using this this was pretty cool so it's got a little catch here that way it's use this to isolate the handle which I think is pretty nifty and then it also has uh, right here this will grab on the the wand if you want so you can look like a Ghostbuster <laughs> but as I was using this this handle came off so no big deal it's just a like a press on press off one so I'm sure slapping a little bit of glue or you know even if you wanted to run like a self tapper or something like that to make that a little bit more permanent it'll probably stay on better and then the nice thing about it too was that these are padded so even though you got four gallons on your back it's a padded four gallons <laughs> so all in all went pretty good running the bit of dye helps a little bit so and then it's even not super waterproof but it's a like a wee bit waterproof so you can still kind of see I was able to do most of these areas this area here I didn't get hit this area here in the center didn't get hit and then over by the tree that area didn't get hit either so mostly we got a big ring around the back around the side almost all the way up to the shed on this side got all the way down that side got the side yard the big side yard <laughs> and then all the other little yards done so whew, what a day so hope you guys enjoyed the video now check you guys oh look at all the dandelions And the big thing with um, whatever the hell this is, <laughs> oh, it's been a long day. Oh, sorry, little buddy. Probably got a cool shot though, huh? <laughs> oh, you are all in covered in blue. Cause this is creeping me out. <laughs> I may or may not shoot any more video so just in case hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll check you next time